Hey guys, Ivan here, and in this video we got a couple of very interesting topics, and I gotta start with this one, it's about Tyler Mannion, the Vice President of the IBB Pro League and MPC, also one of the judges at a Mr. Olympia, making a video in which he breaks down the top two at a Mr. Olympia, he explains why Derek Lansford won the Mr. Olympia and why Derek Lansford beat Heidi Japan. so he does basically a pose for pose analysis, and it's funny that he posted this video literally the day I posted my breakdown of the top two. Now, I encourage you guys to go over to his Instagram profile and watch these two videos about the breakdown of the top two of the Open Olympia. I'm sure he's gonna do the classic physical 212, maybe all other categories, we'll see. But uh, yeah, I know he's not exactly... This is not for entertainment purposes. This is strictly educational. So if you are a competitor, if you are a coach, if you're doing anything... Uh, related uh, to bodybuilding, to competitive bodybuilding in the MPC or IB Pro League, you should watch this video to get an idea of how the judges are judging these shows. Once again, it's not the most entertaining video, it's a little bit dry. While I was watching it, I was thinking, will Nick Strength and Power watch this video? If he does, he's gonna hate it, because I don't think he cares about how the shows are judged. Personally, me, I care a lot, I'm a competitor myself, I'm trying for a pro card next year, and I'm also trying to improve my analysis on my videos, on my YouTube channel, so I was really curious to hear how exactly these judges are judging these shows, so it's very informative, and I think we should have had this a long time ago to actually realize, to understand what the judges are looking for, I think this is really awesome, really valuable, it's really good to have somebody young like this who is willing to put these kind of videos out, so if you guys want to watch it, I encourage you to do that. Now, as far as the poses, what exactly happened to break it down for you guys? Uh, basically, uh, Tyler said that uh, Derek won 5 to 3, so he won 5 poses and Hadi won 3 poses, which is not exactly the way I saw it in my video, but I definitely do see his points. So there were two poses that we kind of disagree about, so the first one is side chest, I wasn't sure who was winning that one, so I said it was a tie, and side tricep, he said that it was very, very close, that some judges thought that Hadi won, he personally thought that Derek won even side tricep, I didn't agree with that, I thought Hadi looked better in the side tricep, but I can see his point, I can see how Derek could win both side poses, and if that is the case, then it is 5 against 3, and that way Derek does deserve to win the Mr. Olympia based on uh, the majority of the poses uh, which he won. Also, it's kind of interesting that Tyler said that Hadi has the best midsection in whole IFBB Pro League. And also he says that Derek Lansford has the best back in the entire IFBB Pro League. And I couldn't agree more, I don't think anybody, literally, right now, and I would say in history of bodybuilding, there are maybe a couple of guys who had the development, the back development, like Derek Lansford. I mean, of course, you had Ronnie Coleman, Phil Heath, Dorian Yates, I would say Kai Green, Joel Stubbs, maybe Samir Banut if you go back to the 80s. So, basically, there are a couple of guys, there's a handful of guys who can match Derek Lansford's back in the history of bodybuilding, and if we talk about today, there is nobody, Derek definitely does have the best back in the IFBB Pro League, as far as the top guys, who can compare, Hadi Chopin, no, Samson Dauda, no, Brandon Curry, no, not really, Andrew Jack, no, Michael Crisio, no, Hunter Labrada, no, so, yeah, Derek has by far the best back in the whole IFBB Pro League, not just the back, but the back double bicep and probably back lat spread. Super, super dominant poses. And it just does make sense that he is the Mr. Olympia today. Also, Tyler Mannion says that next year it could be a different outcome. That Samson Dauda, for example, can surpass all these guys. If he brings better conditioning and he improves his back, he can beat these guys. But right now, he was firmly at that third spot. There was really no conversation of him winning the Mr. Olympia. Even though I thought there might be, it seems like based on Tyler Mannion, no. No, there wasn't. But next year, it could be different. Can Hardy come back and improve enough and win the Mr. Olympia again next year? Maybe. Tyler thinks that he can. Also, Tyler said another very important thing, and that is that you don't have to knock down a champion in order to beat him. You can just beat him by being a little bit better, and that's it. 
And I like to hear that from Tyler, he thinks that it is simply enough to be the best on that day and the history of previous champions is not something they take into consideration. But it's just his opinion, he says in my opinion that should not be the case. But maybe other judges don't think so, so we don't really know right now. So Tyler addressed that, but he didn't say anything about people saying that they chose Derek because he's a better ambassador. Now in this video, Tyler is speaking from the perspective of a judge. He was only talking about the way he was judging these two physiques, he didn't address the rumors, he didn't address the politics, yeah, he is the vice president of the IBB Pro League, an NPC, but in this video he was strictly talking about the judges' perspective, maybe in the future videos he's gonna address the politics, the rumors about politics, but as for now, this is what we get as far as the judging, he explains exactly why Derek won the Mr. Olympia, and there was one more thing that was also very interesting to me, he was talking about the improvements. When he was talking about why Derek is beating Hadi, he was talking about how he improved. His legs a lot, his arms a lot, even his back, even his chest. Overall, he just improved a ton. And I thought this was interesting, I was surprised honestly, the judges are looking at the improvements. So does this mean if the two athletes are extremely close, but one was worse the previous year and they improved, would that athlete have an advantage? I don't know, it doesn't really make a lot of sense, but the judges are humans and they will notice progress if you make it. So, very very informative, very very interesting video, I encourage you guys once again to go ahead and watch it and tell me in the comment section down below what are your opinions on this. Alright, next up we got Samson Dauda showing us what man's physique would look like in a couple of years if there wasn't for that weight cap. <laughs> Seriously, Samson is looking insane in this photo. I mean, take a look at his freaking physique, man. Like, look at the size of that waist and the way everything is flowing, the size of the arms and forearms, the width of the shoulders, the, the chest. I mean, if he wasn't this big, he would look really good in man's physique, he has that shape, he has a very, very aesthetic shape, and by the way, he is a mass monster, he is a 300 pound bodybuilder, he is dwarfing the other top two guys, so he's that much bigger, but he has very, very good aesthetics. On that Mr. Olympia stage, I don't think he really showed his waist and his abs at their maximum potential. He was probably just too tired from all the posing and his control wasn't the best. So I think he should practice that for next Mr. Olympia because you can see his, his stomach, his midsection is really good. Once again, he's doing the Romania Pro this weekend, this Sunday, actually tomorrow, and yeah, he's winning that show, I mean, who can challenge him? Nathan Diaz and Bekru Stabani, no, no, they're not on that level, not yet. Plus, it seems like Samson is bringing even better conditioning than Mr. Olympia, and this could be a reason why he's doing this show, maybe because he missed the peak at Mr. Olympia, maybe he could have been drier, more conditioned. He didn't say anything about it, but it seems like he's coming in better condition in this show and he probably, maybe he wants to just show that he's better than his 2023 Mr. Olympia edition and once we see that, we might think that he could have won the Mr. Olympia if he was a little bit sharper. I mean, we'll see, maybe he's relaxed now and he won't try as hard, but then again, that might be a good thing, maybe he's gonna be more relaxed, he's gonna have less stress, and maybe because of that, he's gonna peak better, he's gonna hold less water. It is very, very possible that this version is gonna be better than the Mr. Olympia version, and also in this video, at three days out, I think his glutes and his hamstrings do look sharper, I think his back looks sharper, and I think he's gonna look much sharper on the day of the show. So it seems like he is going to be better on that stage than the Mr. Olympia, but we'll see. And here you can see his back and uh, yeah, I mean after watching Derek's back for a while, yeah, this back <laughs> doesn't look that good. So yeah, he needs to work on improving that back. He's gonna do the Arnold Classic this year, actually next year. And I don't know how good that is, how smart it is. I know he wants to compete and yeah, he did make a lot of progress from show to show and he, did, he really didn't have an off season for the past couple of years. But if he had one, how much progress would he make then? I mean, Derek skipped Arnold, even though he would have probably won it. He skipped the Arnold because he wanted to improve and come better than Mr. Olympia. And he really did make significant progress. He made more progress than Samson did. So if Samson really wanted that Mr. Olympia title, unfortunately, I have to say it, he would probably do better if he actually 
took some time off, some actual time off and really focused on growing, on improving. But then also his coach is Milos Archer, and Milos talks about how he made the most progress in the post-show rebound periods, and that he had one a full off-season, full year off, and that he didn't really make a lot of progress that year, but I don't know. We'll see what Samson is gonna do, he already said he was gonna do the Arnold Classic, so he'll probably do it. How much progress can he make uh, doing multiple shows in a year? We'll see, but in order for his back to match Derek's, yeah, I mean, I don't think it's ever gonna match, I don't think it's ever gonna be as good, but I think he would make more progress if he took a year off. Anyways, we're gonna watch him tomorrow on Romania Pro, and he is going to dominate and win that show easily. If you guys disagree, you can tell me down below. And at the same show, Romania Pro, we're gonna watch what the Instagram star Marcelo D'Angelis, aka Horse MD, actually looks like on stage now that he made all these improvements. And he posted this photo, and in this one, he actually does look very, very good, probably better than I expected. Now, this guy tried to compete in classic physique last year, he couldn't make the weight, so he focused on growing as much as possible in the offseason, and he made a lot of progress. This show is going to be his first pro show ever. He receives a lot of criticism, people are saying that he's an Instagram bodybuilder, that he doesn't look nearly as good on stage. I don't think so, I disagree with that. I think he's gonna look awesome at this show, and this is an opportunity for him to prove that. Now, what can he do as far as the results? I don't know, because there is no chance he can beat Samson. I don't think there is a possibility of him beating Nathan Diasha or Behru Stabani. I don't know about Andrea Presti. If he beats Andrea Presti and places fourth, that would be a humongous success. But there is also a bunch of other great guys uh, which are not exactly super popular, are not Olympians. I don't know what those guys look like. But once again, best case scenario, best, best possible case scenario, uh, fourth. Maybe he can beat uh, Andrea Presti because he actually has legs. Look at those legs. I mean, they are pretty, pretty massive, pretty round. I mean, Andrea Presti probably has bigger frame. He's overall a bigger bodybuilder. Maybe he's gonna bring better conditioning, but he doesn't have legs, and that that's gonna cost him a lot. So maybe best case scenario once again, Marcel D'Angelo is gonna place third, actually fourth at a Romania Pro. Whatever you guys think of his potential and what he's gonna do at this show. Tell me down below in the comment section whatever your thoughts are about this entire video. Let me know down below, guys. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up for more bodybuilding stuff like this. Subscribe to my channel, guys. Thank you so much for watching. See you soon. All the best and bye-bye.